unfortunately, um, TB is still uh, common in Iraq. Um, and the problem with tuberculosis is sometimes it's it's just dormant. So you might have it for a long period of time uh, before presentation. Why is it important to treat the patient with the TB or not? Of course, to treat because uh, first of all to treat it uh, can be disastrous if untreated. وأكيد أنتوا تعرفون أن pulmonary و extra pulmonary TB و at the same time uh, for uh, tuberculosis if it's dormant and the patient doesn't know that he has tuberculosis and then uh, you put him on immunosuppressant drugs uh, for Uh, treating other diseases that might he suffer from, uh, this can result in reactivation of his dormant tuberculosis and can be disastrous. Uh, because we are endemic, actually, in Iraq, قبل ما نبدي البيشنت على أي immune suppressant drug, and so we investigation متأكد إنه هو عنده TB أو ما عنده TB. Okay. Uh, to put him on anti-TB medications to treat his illness. As to why uh, tuberculosis or mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis is uh, uh, basically nasty uh, type of bacteria. What I mean by nasty, yeah, it's very bad. It's different from ordinary bacteria. Um, and It's bacteria, okay? So we expect that it should respond to to the available antibiotics uh, that we have. But unfortunately, this is not the case. يعني أنتوا سنحن مثل ما تعرفون أنه من يحمل نقول بكتيريا نقول نفكر بالانتيبايتكس, okay? Whatever any kind of bacteria, and different antibiotics, and we treat accordingly حسب sensitivity. Uh, and the activity of the antibiotic. When it comes to uh, tuberculosis, it's not. So they are not responding to the actual antibiotics. Why? Because of few uh, reasons or causes. First of all, they grow slowly than other bacteria. And uh, we know that most of the antibiotics that we have, they are affected against rapidly growing bacteria, okay? So they're not effective against the slowly growing ones. This is one thing. Um, the second thing, the mycobacterial uh, uh, cells can be dormant. يعني شنو؟ شوفوا الآن إذا تكون dormant يعني it's not active يعني بس مجرد dormant مثل ما قلت it's not it's not replicating it's not uh, doing anything. وبالتالي اللي احنا مثل ما تعرفون الانتيبايوتكس they affect uh, certain steps بالبكتيريال uh, growth يعني اما affect البروتين سينثيسيز مثلا او affect السيل وول سينثيسيز من تكون السيل از نوت ريبليكيتنج البكتيريا من تكون از نوت ريبليكيتنج ما عندك فد هدف الانتيبايوتك كان اتاك او كان ورك اون اوكي سو ذات means they are completely resistant to the antibiotics, ordinary antibiotics. But they have thick, let's say, the mycobacterial wall, cell wall, is, is very lipid rich, which is imper- impermeable to many drugs. So drugs cannot cross, ordinary drugs cannot cross the uh, cell wall. Uh, another reason uh, for uh, the fact that most antibiotics doesn't work on mycobacteria is that uh, these all, uh, cells, uh, these bacteria uh, are intracellular. So they are inside, they reside inside the macrophages, inside the cells. Obviously, again, the available antibiotics cannot penetrate these cells to attack these bacteria. Um, plus, plus, mycobacteria by itself, 
uh, they can't develop resistance. يعني you treat them with this antibiotic and after a while they have their own mechanism, they have their own mechanism of developing resistance against available uh, antibiotics. That's why never ever think of treating tuberculosis with single agent. So whenever uh, we talk about uh, TB, uh, you you have to know that uh, multiple agents are needed to treat uh, tuberculosis, as if you are treating cancer, actually. Most of the time, we need combination of chemotherapeutics, and we have certain regimen to treat cancer. This is almost the same. Okay, so as you see from this diagram, we have different uh, regimen to treat uh, mycobacterial tuberculosis. And as you can see, uh, sometimes we have three agents, like isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, sometimes isoniazide with rifampicin, uh, rifampicin with SMB12, and so different combinations, but I, I need you to pay attention to the duration of of treatment. So it's six months, nine months, 12 months, and sometimes more than 24 months, or so more than two years you are treating tuberculosis. So it's not a one week course of antibiotics or two week course. It's, we are talking here about months. So one month, two months are not enough. You have to know that you need to use combination plus to treat for long period of time. Okay. So uh, the first agent um, in this group, anti-tuberculosis uh, drug, is isoniazide. This is the most active, the most common, the widely used one. Uh, and the most effective, actually. Um, so, what it does, basically, to kill the um, the mycobacteria is through uh, the inhibition of the synthesis of mycolic acid, which is important for mycobacterial cell wall. So, if there is no cell wall, the bacteria can't make the cell wall. That's it. It's dead. The good thing about isoniazide, it diffuses into all body fluids and also in the caseous material as well. So like when you have when you have TB lesion in the skin, for example, uh, or anywhere else in the body, uh, if you open it, you will see that there is necrotic tissues resembling cheese. Uh, the good thing about isoniazide, it can uh, excess and can uh, diffuse into this caseous material. It can also uh, cross the meninges uh, and the drug concentration of the concentrations of isoniazides in the CSF are similar to that of the serum. So if you have TB meningitis, then isoniazide is a good uh, drug of choice for treatment of TB meningitis, okay? The most uh, important side effect of isoniazide is hepatitis. Unfortunately, it can cause hepatitis if it's used for a long period of time. And it can also cause uh, peripheral neuropathy. But they found that uh, the peripheral neuropathy that is caused by isoniazide as a side effect is due to the deficiency of pyridoxine. So if you provide the patient with pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6 supplement daily, then you can avoid the development of this side effect, the peripheral neuropathy. Okay, another important antibiotic that is used in the treatment of uh, tuberculosis and effective against many other uh, types of bacteria is rifampicin. And rifampicin basically uh, inhibits RNA synthesis. So if there is no RNA, no 
small cells growing cell death. That's it. Again, the good thing about rifampicin is that it's uh, distributed widely in body fluids and tissues, so it can access any type of tissue and any organ. So whether you have TB uh, of the bladder, TB of the uh, lung, TB of the meninges, uh, TB of the bone, you can use uh, rifampicin. Um, the good thing, another good thing about rifampicin is that effective, it is effective against both intracellular and extracellular microbacteria. So it is effective against the microbacteria that resides inside the cells and the ones that, that are, uh, uh, found outside the cells as well. Also it's effective against many gram positive, negative, uh, and negative organisms, uh, Given it can be used prophylactically for patients uh, exposed to meningococci or hemophilus influenzae, and it's also effective against mycobacterium leprosy or leprae. Um, so it's a good antibiotic. It's effective against uh, tuberculosis and against other uh, gram-positive and negative organisms. The most common adverse side effect about of rifampicin is nausea, vomiting, and rush. Also, another thing that I need you to remember about rifampicin is that it causes orange color. It gives orange color to urine, sweat, and tears. يعني كل المريض when he is on, when you put him on uh, rifampicin, that you might have Discoloration of your teeth. عيونك دموع مالتك راح تكون برتقالية. Interesting. والسوتين جاهزة ممكن تلاحظ أكو بي change بالكلام. And also change باليورين. وإذا ال patients حاط تجيك patients حاطة lenses استخدم lenses وأنت you put her on the fantasy. The lenses can be stained permanently because of the teeth because of the stained teeth. Okay. So this is one interesting fact uh, about rifampicin. Uh, the other thing that I want you to always remember about rifampicin is that it is uh, a hepatic enzyme inducer, a cytochrome P450 inducer. Then, what is the problem? What is the hepatic enzyme inducer? This is the for most of uh, the drugs that we give to the patients are metabolized by cytochrome P450. So, if the patient is uh, taking rifampicin and at the same time he is receiving another type of medication, then uh, this might, uh, rifampicin might increase the metabolism of this, uh, of the other medication, which means it might decrease the effectiveness of that medication. يعني تجيك واحدة مثلا example of this واحدة تاخذ pills contraceptive pills وانت تعطيها رفانتسين ترجع لك ورا فترة شو تقول لك دكتور انا صرت حامل مع العلم انه انا دا اخذ ال pills انا I've never missed a pill so why ليش لانه انت اعطيتها رفانتسين ورفانتسين Increase the metabolism of uh, her contraceptive pills, so they are not effective anymore, and she ended up being pregnant. So it's very important to always to remember and to put in your mind that rifampicin is an enzyme inducer. Okay, so it increases the elimination of many other drugs. A third interesting agent and widely used uh, in this group is the ethambutol. Ethambutol is bacteriostatic, okay? So it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't kill, it's not cidal, it's static. Um, what it does basically, it inhibits uh, one of the enzymes that is important for the synthesis of mycobacteria cell wall. Uh, Isambutol, if you have a patient who has uh, meningitis, uh, 
you need to know that it can be told cause the blood brain barrier only when the meninges are inflamed. يعني إذا ما عند ال patients meningitis هو ما يروح لل blood brain ما يروح لل ال CSF can't cross the blood brain barrier. فقط إذا ال meninges inflamed then he then this medication can cross and go to the CSF. Important side effect of ethambutol is optic neuritis, so uh, inflammation of the optic nerve, which might affect the visual acuity and uh, might affect the patient's ability to, to, to differentiate between red and the green color. Okay? You see, these medications, the patients take them for a long period of time. For that, you see, and they are. أقوى من ال من الانتباتكس العادية ااا فتشوفون شوية عندها ااا serious side effect and you need to know each one ااا which kind of kind which kind of side effect ااا might result in okay pyrazinamide Pyrazinamide, again, it's what it does. It disrupts the mycobacterial cell membrane metabolism and transport function. So it affects the cell membrane activity. It's one of the important uh, drugs that are used uh, as a first line uh, uh, medication for the treatment of tuberculosis. Uh, usually is given in um, combination with isonazide and rifampicin. Actually, this is the most common combination that is used for the treatment of uh, tuberculosis, which is uh, the three of them, isonazide, rifampicin, and pyrazinamide, used for six months. And uh, uh, pyrazinamide is acting as a sterilizing, sterilizing agent. Yeah, it's sterilizing. It's, it's effective against the residual intracellular organisms that might cause relapse. Any yani, organisms that are not has have not been killed by or eliminated by rifampicin and isonazide, uh, pyrazinamide actually can get rid of them. Um, again, it's, it is hepatotoxic in some patients and may cause nausea and vomiting as a side effect. حقيقة أني ما حبيت أتقل عليكم كلش وأدخل بالديتيلز of these uh, antibiotics لأنه هي صراحة it's not uh, they are not widely so I try to uh, mention just the important points about each uh, medication. Uh, another agent that we have is cryptomycin. Cryptomycin um, is effective uh, mainly against the extracellular tuberculosis. So it's, it does not uh, penetrate uh, the, the cell membrane. Um, again, it does not cause the blood-brain barrier under normal uh, circumstances, unless the meninges are inflamed. Uh, tryptomycin, if, if used uh, for a long period of time, uh, then it's autotoxic and nephrotoxic. So you need to follow up the patient uh, and assess him for the development of these side effects. So the drugs that we mentioned, isonazide, rifampicin, uh, pyrazinamide, uh, isambutol, uh, tryptomycin, these all are called first-line uh, drugs for tuberculosis. Then we have second line. So why are we having second line? Basically, if, if the first line is not working, yeah, as simple as this. So if you have resistance, when you when you're gonna use the when you're gonna use the second line uh, drug, if in case that you have resistance to the first line, so you give you put the patient on the first line uh, combination and the patient is not responding, 
uh, or it's already the bacteria is resistant or in case of you having uh, treatment limiting adverse drug reactions as you remember probably uh, I mentioned for each uh, of the previous medications we had kind of serious side effects such as hepatitis uh, optic neuritis so autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity. So if you, uh, the, if the patient is already on one of the first line medications and developed one of these serious adverse effects, or if he is uh, not responding uh, to the first line medication, then you you put him on the second line uh, drugs for the treatment of tuberculosis. Okay, um, so for the second line, we have three medications, ethionamide, capriomycin, and cyclosterin. Ethionamide is chemically related to isonazide, and it also blocks the synthesis of mycolic acid. Um, it's only available orally. It can cause gastric irritation and neurological symptoms as a side effect. Uh, while capriomycin given parenterally and yes, ethionamide only available in the oral form, capriomycin is administered uh, uh, parenterally and what it does basically it inhibits protein synthesis or well, uh interferes with cell growth. Uh, So, uh, capriomycin is primarily reserved for the treatment of MDRTB, which means multiple drug-resistant tuberculosis. So, it's it's not a first line. It's only used when you have uh, the patient uh, on, when you put the patient on uh, more than one medication for the treatment of the tuberculosis and the patient is still not responding, then you can think of uh, capriomycin as a treatment for such patients. Again, capriomycin, because it's similar to aminoglycosides, so it's uh, all the aminoglycosides, most of them, as we know, uh, they can cause nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. So uh, you need to monitor the patient, monitor the renal function and uh, hearing of the patient uh, to avoid the, the development of these side effects. Uh, the third agent is the cyclosterin. Cyclosterin is an orally effective agent, so it's giving orally. It is uh, it interferes with the synthesis of bacterial cell wall. Yani his SSR Ednam Ethionamide and Cyclosterin, both of them interfere with the synthesis of bacterial cell wall. Uh, in terms of the distribution, it's this it's distributed widely throughout the body fluid, including the CSF, Lama Edna Mushkila. again the most important uh, side effect that might happen with uh, cyclosterin is CNS disturbances and seizure which might uh, might happen actually as a combi as a uh, adverse effects of such medication so as you know um, as i said this is a very nasty uh, type of bacteria unfortunately um, um, you need to have uh, the patient on combination of antibiotics and you need to treat for a long period of time and you need to monitor for the development of resistance. You need to monitor for the monitor the response of the patient, and you need to monitor for the development of side effects. So you need to be really aware about uh, side effects of these medications. So the daily could show the tuberculosis actually. مرات يعني مو مرات أغلب الأحيان أكون يو أكو يونت خاصة بالمستشفى where they treat. Uh, tuberculosis and they know all about it so they are like uh, better than others or, or in a better position than others 
for the treatment of tuberculosis. Thank you for your listening and uh, all the best for your final exams.